Hello, you're here with Andy and we've got a book review for you today. Before I get started, I just want to say hello, give a shout out to the master bather Scott Bradfield and advise you to check out his channel, which is called Reading Good Books in the Bathtub. If you like books and you like somebody who's not afraid to speak his mind, I suggest you check out Scott. Also, a shout out to The Book Chemist, great book reviewer from Italy and lovely guy. And then finally, Clifford Lee Sargent from Books Are Better Than Food. Love all those three guys and have learned a lot from them. So, the book I'm going to review today is... It's Lucky Allen by the American writer Jonathan Latham and it's a short story collection. So Jonathan Latham was born in 1964 in Brooklyn, New York and the reviewer I've just mentioned, book chemist, is a big fan. He would often be named in the same breath as uh, other big American writer from similar time frame, Michael Chabon. And this was my first time reading any of his work after hearing lots of uh, people say about how much they enjoyed his books, but also lots of good reviews and newspapers and things like that. He is a New York Times best-selling author. Um, his most famous book is probably Motherless Brooklyn, which was recently made to a very good movie with the likes of uh, Bruce Willis, William Baldwin, and most notably Edward Norton as a protagonist. Private Detective with Tourette's. Uh, I haven't read that novel yet, but certainly on the back of the movie, I'm probably going to read that at some point soon, if I can get a hold of it. So, um, what would I say about this short story collection? Well, I do really enjoy short story collections, and I had heard some things about Jonathan Latham's writing being slightly unusual, but boy did I not know what to expect with this. So, in the uh, review for the... New York Times, when this book first came out, their critic Michael Greenberg said of Jonathan Latham, One has the sense that sometimes that he, at Latham, leans too heavily on his dazzling linguistic facility while his character's language insufficiently imagined as an insistent compilation of words. So, really, to put that in layman's terms, He's saying that Latham is very talented as a writer in terms of his use of English, but sometimes that critic felt that he was so focused on the beauty of the language and skillfulness of the technique of the writing that his characters weren't as fully rounded as they could be. Now, I don't really agree with that with all the stories in Lucky Allen, um, but... Uh, there are definitely some of them that are a lot less character focused than others. Uh, the one I struggle with most was called, give me a second. It was one about a blog. Oh. Yes, my apologies, it was called The Dreaming Jaw, The Salivating Ear. And it was almost more like a piece of Prose poetry or blank verse. Uh, the one redeeming feature and that was there were references to William Butler Yeats and the Lake Isle of Innisfree and somebody who's proud to be from the island of Ireland. I've always been an admirer of Yeats so that definitely sort of uh, saved the day and that particular story for me. Uh, my favourites were, well I really liked Lucky Allen. But um, I suppose even more than that, I very much enjoyed the story uh, The King of Words, which is about a couple who are very bookish and have very niche tastes in books, as uh, us bookworms can have. And they make their way to a city where their favourite author uh, lives and they try to hang all, out all day in the post office to find them and to show him their stories. Uh, I'm not going to tell you the en ending. Um, my guess is it could be based on Thomas Pynchon, but really you could apply it to any writer, to be honest, because it's more really about the 
fanaticism of the couple and the writer per se. Um, but yeah, it was very funny and uh, you know it, it was easy to relate to. Um, some of the stranger books was one which was the story of these really bizarre characters on an island who were comic book characters but they were reading about themselves in the comic book while they were experiencing it. Um, I know that whole metafiction thing is very popular but uh, it really took me a while to get into that. Uh, I would say if I had my choice, my go-to thing with stories would be something like John Steinbeck that's very much rooted in realism. I do like uh, funny stories and I don't mind unusual characters or even aliens or things like that as long as there's a coherent narrative and it's not too weird or experimental with the language but on the whole this is a very good collection um, with humour and I uh, like the characters who were sort of uh, oddball and on the fringes of society struggling with society but still you saw the beauty in the world and they kind of found ways to carry on so other thing I would say is uh, it was a bit like maybe drinking wine for the first time. You know, the first time you kind of go, oh, this is a bit bitter and vinegary. I don't think I like this. But then when you taste it again and you get used to it, you learn how to appreciate it. And I think that might be the case with this book of Lethems. Um, you know, I, I might not have come away initially kind of going, wow, I really enjoyed that. But it's definitely left an impression. I think that's what a good short story should do. It should leave you um, having made some kind of a, an impact or made you have a reaction. And I definitely have thought a lot more about the story since I finished the book. So it is one that I will probably revisit and I might gain more from on further readings. I feel like your fiction is a little bit uh, more experimental. Definitely it's uh, one for you. If you're used to your narrative and your characters and plot being a bit more straightforward, you might not like it, but if you aren't afraid to step out of your comfort zone and try something different and bear with it and just go with his flow, you might actually enjoy it. And it's always good to get out of your comfort zone. So in terms of uh, Scott Bradfield's channel, um, the book chemist's channel and... Uh, Clifford Sargent's channel, uh, Books of Breath and Food. I'll put links for those in the description. My name's Andy, based in Belfast, and um, I'll be doing these reviews from time to time. Just a bit like Scott Bradfield to help me remember what I've read. I have no experience in editing videos or whatever, so I'll just be putting these as they are. If any of you uh, can help me edit them, I'd be more than willing to send you files if you can give me some free assistance so we get the, this channel up and running. I'm planning maybe to do some interviews and things about books at some point on, on here. So anyway, uh, it's been good to have this opportunity to chat about books and uh, if you watch this and enjoy it, please share it with your friends. Um, give a like and subscribe and uh, I'll be back with you again soon. Bye!